Hi there Mercedes owners, today in your 2020 Mercedes Sprinter 3500 we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Furion's wireless camera system. Now I will say with this system we are going to need quite a few additional parts in order to get it installed. You'll probably want to pick up a set of butt connectors, uh, you'll need some ring terminals, you're going to need quite a bit of wire, and we're also going to be using Takancha's universal wiring kit to give us the necessary signals to actually power up and utilize our camera. The Mercedes here does not like to play well with the system, so you're going to set some lights in your dash if you just try to hook it up to its existing wiring. But if you follow along with us, we're going to cover the things that you need and how to get it hooked up. So get ready for an adventure. And this is what our camera system looks like. You can see our display here. You do get two mounts that come in your kit to have a couple of options on how you want to store it on your motorhome. On the back side here, you can see the ball where we can choose which mount uh, we want to insert into it. You'll have your window mount, which has a suction cup on it there, so you can attach it to the window. And you also have a just a kind of flat platform mount. We're going to be using the platform mount for demonstration purposes here, so we're just going to snap that into place, and then you can see here we can set this right on the dash. Our monitor here is powered by a auxiliary outlet just like your cigarette lighter style outlet you just plug that in there to power this up there's three cameras that come in your kit you'll get a two side cameras and a rear camera and there's a option to add a fourth camera on here if you wanted to purchase an additional one here we can see the four cameras uh, the three cameras i'm sorry you the backups there in the center and we've got both of our sides the sides are nice because if you're driving a bigger motor home or rv or anything like that or uh, even a trailer you haul in a big trailer when you go to merge onto the highway or change lanes or anything like that there's a lot of blind spots that runs down the side of your vehicle and it can be difficult to to ensure that there's nobody there. So we can utilize these to give us a visual behind us when we're backing up, as well as both the left and the right side of our motorhome. But what's cool about this is if we switch her over here, the triggers that the cameras have can be hooked into your signals on your vehicle and you can use those to automatically turn on that particular camera when the signal is activated. And while we're in the all three uh, view here, if I turn on my right turn signal, it switches to our right camera. When I turn off the right signal, it will switch back. And it may seem like, hey, there's an awful long delay there before when you turn the signal on into when it switched to the camera. And there is a reason for that because our system here, uh, it, it uses a delay because it's getting a pulsed signal. So since it's getting an on and off signal, how is it supposed to know how long to keep the camera on? Because it receives a signal and then it loses a signal. If it were to keep the camera on only when it's receiving a signal, you'd get a flashing pulse on your screen here. So it uses a delay like that to monitor for an input over a certain amount of time. That way, if it does cut out, it doesn't immediately turn your camera off on you. So that's also why it takes it a minute to switch from mode to mode and switch back to the mode that you were in. But it does work in all directions. You know, we can, we can also do to the left as well. Uh, it should switch to that one for us automatically. We got our backup lines on here. Turn those off. And here we can see our left side couple of the guys hanging out there in the back. This is a full color display and there is a button on the right here that does give you some options where you can pair your cameras, add the additional one, change which camera they are. If you don't like the left side's on camera two, the right side, you can change all those positions. Uh, it's only going to stay in the menu for so long and then it comes out. It's a touch screen so you can press those to pick them. Pictures where you can adjust so we've got our pairing here and then we've got our setup. Setup is where you can adjust the various things that you need to see here on your display. If we go to picture, we can then select the camera that we want and adjust the brightness, contrast, and color of that individual camera. You can do each one separately. Uh, so that's pretty much the majority of your features here. The cameras are wireless. They do require power to be running to them as well as a trigger wire if you wanted to switch between the various cameras uh, when you're driving down the road, depending on you know, your blinkers and things like that. 
But as far as the signal feed, it is all wireless and it does a decent job of giving us a lower refresh rate so there's not too much latency between the signal feed. It is a bit grainy, but overall it's enough to be able to see what you need to see when driving uh, to make sure that there's no incidents. So my final thoughts with this system, it's a nice system if you need three cameras, three views, uh, but I would say it's mostly a nice system if you have a large motorhome like a Class A or a trailer that already has marker lights and rear view lights. This kit was specifically designed to work with those type of vehicles, so that's why it's in the shape that it's in to make it easy to install because you're just supposed to remove the lights that are on there and put these in place. It uses the same power circuits to power it all up. This Mercedes here doesn't have that, doesn't have the lights or anything. So this is actually probably one of the most difficult kits of camera systems to install on here because it was not designed for this motorhome. It's really, again, designed for those other ones. So in order to make this work, we had to add some additional components. Uh, we had to run all of our own wiring. We have to drill quite a few holes and you have to provide all of your own hardware because the kit thinks that you're going to have a lot of those things already set up on the vehicle that you're installing it on. Uh, so I would definitely recommend checking out some other kits that we've got here at eTrailer for this particular motorhome, just because it's not appropriate uh, for this one. It's a cool camera kit, but if you got one of those big ones, or if you're looking to upgrade uh, and you got one of these now, maybe you want to swap it over, that's an okay idea. Um, but I'm not a big fan on putting it on this particular, particular vehicle here. Um, that's kind of my final thoughts on it. Our customer wanted this one and it, it is installed on there. Uh, so if you're paying somebody to do this and you don't have to go through all the work that we did, it's probably a nice system here at the very end because our customer is going to get exactly what he wants, all three cameras in one display. It, but if you're going to do this at home, just keep in mind that you're probably going to be spending a lot of time on this uh, to get this installed because of all the extra work that you have to do. And the labor to me factors into the cost. So when you put in all the extra work that was required to do this that puts the cost of this camera system probably quite a bit above uh, any other camera system that we've got offered here if you if you think about the labor you're going to be doing as, as a dollar amount. We'll begin our installation here at the front of the vehicle. Our Mercedes here doesn't provide us with the necessary circuits that we need to operate our cameras so we're going to have to add our own circuits and run our own wires for this. This camera system is really more set up for your larger trailers and your Class A motorhomes that already have marker lights and things like that so you can utilize existing wiring. We don't have that on our Mercedes motorhome here, this Mercedes style one. So we're going to be, again, adding our own. We're gonna use Takancha's Universal Splice Wiring Kit to give us a four pole connector for like a trailer. And we're gonna use all the outputs from that to operate our cameras. So we mounted our module over here on the passenger side. And the reason we're using this module is because if you try to tap directly in to your Mercedes uh, lights here to get your turn signals and the power that you need from the running light circuit, it's gonna set a light on your dash saying to check your bulbs because you're gonna be drawing additional current off of these circuits and it knows that. It, it monitors that to determine if there's any kind of circuit faults or shorts. And excess current could indicate a short, so the system shuts it down. So that's why we're installing this module here to give us an uninterrupted power supply that's completely separate from the computer systems here on the vehicle, so it's not going to determine that there's an issue with the wiring because uh, we, we are adding these parts. So we just zip tie it right here to get it in place. You've got several wires coming out of the bottom here. The main focus is with the yellow, the green, and the brown. The yellow wire is our driver's side turn signal. So we're gonna route this over toward the driver's side towards the headlight assembly up here so we can uh, get our signal from there. The green wire is the passenger side, so that goes right here to this light. And the brown wire is your tail light circuit, and that can go to either one. We can get tail lights from either of the lights. And the reason why this isn't gonna set a code or set anything on our dash is because this module doesn't draw any current. It's actually just monitoring to see if there's any signals on the vehicle here present. And if there is, it reproduces those signals out the four pole, giving us the proper signals we need that's not gonna affect any of the circuitry on the vehicle. So you can see the green wire here goes right over to our connector. Our factory connector is right here where it comes out of the tail light. We hooked the green wire in line with the or black wire with the gray stripe that's the one that's the furthest color wire furthest pin towards the outside of the vehicle we cut the wire we stripped it back and we put a butt connector on it adding our green wire with that so it's able to get those signals our brown wire since our modules on this side we went ahead and connected the brown wire 
to this side and that'll hook to the top wire here on the opposite side, the opposite corner of your connector here. And this is a gray wire with a red stripe. And again, we just cut the wire, stripped it back and put our butt connector on there. We had to peel back some of the insulation to be able to do so. Now, the yellow wire on your module here is actually the, is a short wire and your green wire is really long because typically this module is installed on the driver's side, but all of our, our battery, our circuitry and everything is over here on the passenger side. So to minimize wire lengths, we used this extra long green wire that we had. We cut off most of this green wire after we connected it to our light here and used that excess to extend our yellow wire over to the driver's side. So we're just gonna follow this real quick. And you can see right there, there's where we put our butt connector. We're using heat shrink butt connectors. We'll, we'll shrink all these down to make sure that no corrosion can enter them. And then it just becomes green here because we needed to extend it. And we can use the wire right there from our kit to be able to do so. Get it over here to the driver's side. And we tap into the, basically the same wire over here on this side. Uh, it's the same pin number. It's a different color over here. It's black with a white stripe over here, but it's that pin that's closest to the passenger side. So on this, on this side, it's going to be closest to the inside. On your passenger side, this is the wire closest to the outside of the vehicle. So we've got all of our lighting signals wired up to our module here. We need to get power and ground to it to make it work and send out its signals on the four pole. The white wire here is your ground wire. It has a ring terminal that's pre-attached to it. We use the self-tapping screw that comes included with our kit to just run it into the sheet metal located right here. And that will give us our ground. Our power wire is the black wire coming out of our module with a red stripe on it here. You see it's black with a red stripe. That's the power wire. You're gonna get a big bundle of black wire in your kit and we're gonna attach that to it. Again, using heat shrink since we're outside. And this black wire then is gonna to route towards our batteries. And we route this towards the coach batteries on our motorhome here, located under the steps. So here's the other end of our black wire that we routed uh, just underneath the vehicle here. Uh, this is your step. This is where you'll find your batteries. This step just pulls off so we can access them. We crimped it to the fuse harness that comes in your kit. So this is just looped when you get it. Just cut your fuse harness in half there, strip back one side and use a butt connector. We're using yellow here instead of the blue because this is a little bit thicker gauge. It's easier to work with. On the other end of our fuse harness, we crimped on the ring terminal that comes in your kit. You get a couple of different sizes so you can choose the one that's best for your battery. We use the, uh, the slightly smaller one than this. After you've got that connected, you can insert your fuse. We've got ours currently out of it. And then you can test your four pole connection to make sure it's working properly. Now we've already tested ours and we know it's working properly. So then we routed our four pole connections very similarly to this. We routed it pretty much following this black wire until we get down underneath. From there, we can branch it off towards our cameras where we need to, to go to our cameras. We're gonna come back to this later though, because we, next we're gonna need to mount up all of our cameras so we know where to route our wiring to. But we needed to do this step just to get the necessary wires to operate our camera. So here's our camera. Time to get these guys mounted up. The side cameras are gonna be side specific. You can see the Furion F there. We want the F to be upright so we can tell that it's the F and that's how you know which side you got. The camera will then point towards the rear. So it would normally replace one of your side marker lights, but again, this motorhome's so small, it doesn't have any side marker lights. So we're gonna add it. And we're gonna be putting it in about this position right here staying underneath uh, any moving components. So we're gonna stay below our slide out here to make sure we don't accidentally interfere with any of that. Another reason why we chose this location here is if we open up our compartment, we can actually see in here and see that there's nothing on the other side, which makes this an ideal location for, uh, for mounting this component. So we'll take our light here. We're gonna hold it up to where we want it to be we're just going to kind of tip it back so we can see where the wire pokes out the back here and now that i know where the wire pokes out i'm going to make a little mark there and that's where we're going to drill our hole we're going to eventually drill it to this size uh it's a 7 16 you could go up to half inch, anywhere in there is probably fine. I, the reason why we're going larger is obviously our wire is gonna be able to pass through there, but once we put butt connectors on this, it's easier to make the connections here on the outside than it would be 
in there so we can pull our wires through, make our connections, and then push those butt connectors back through. But you need a hole large enough to be able to fit the butt connector. So that's why we're going with a larger size hole than what our wires would just require by themselves. We are gonna do a pilot hole first. So we're gonna switch to a smaller bit, like an eighth inch or somewhere around there. This is bigger than an eighth. This is about a 3 sixteenths, but anywhere in that location, just so we can get us a small hole that if we need to fill, we could fill and verify this is gonna come out where we want it to on the other side. So now we're gonna check on the inside and verify that our hole does pass through. We're gonna be able to get our, all of our wires routed through there. All right, so it passed through fine. We were able to find it there in the paneling. If you're having a difficult time locating it, a flashlight works pretty well because you can hold it up there, look for light on the inside and vice versa. You can put this on the inside and see if you see it shining through this side. It's a little small of a hole, so it's difficult for the camera to see, but I could see some light, so I know that we're good to go. We're gonna increase it to the larger size here and then finish drilling that out. And now I'm just gonna show you the light trick just so you can see it. It was hard to see with the smaller hole, but now we got the bigger one there. I've got my light pointed away from it. And then you can see I point my light towards it. You can now see the holes lit up, not lit up, lit up. So that's an easy way to visualize that you're gonna be able to access this on the other side. So here we've got our wires pulled through. This is the yellow wire coming from the four pole connector that we had added. Uh, I did have to extend it, so this is some additional yellow wire. This is the brown wire from the harness that we added. Again, I had to extend it. Uh, we didn't have brown wire laying around, so we used black wire to extend it over here. The brown wire would be your taillight circuit, and the taillight circuit is how we're gonna actually power these up. The lights and the camera will receive power from uh, the taillight circuit. Uh, that's, that way, the camera is able to receive uh, like a blinker function and not turn on and off. It's gonna stay on solid thanks to the tail lights. You could wire this to an ignition source, but if you were to do something like that, you would have to run additional wires uh, for that as well. And which wouldn't be too bad for these side cameras, but running an additional accessory powered wire for the rear camera is probably gonna take you longer than this entire install just to get that one wire run. Because uh, it's very difficult to get wires routed throughout the walls inside your motorhome and stuff, especially if you're going all the way from front to back. So tail lights will make us, save us a lot of time and work out well for us. So now we got this over here. I'm actually gonna leave some of the excess here and bundle it underneath, because uh, when routing the wires, we, there are some components that we're close to that we want to avoid. So by having some excess here, I can pull this through, make my connections, pull this back down, and then keep the wires clear of anything that could cause it damage, like your exhaust or moving components like suspension or steering. So we're just gonna strip this back now we're gonna start with the black wire, which is again our brown wire connected to our four pole. It's just an extension. So this is our tail light circuit. You can look at it that way. Our tail light circuit will connect to the power as well for both the camera and both the camera and for the light. So on your wires here, they are labeled. And the labels ended up coming off when I was uh, testing them. They're just stickers that are on there. They do come off pretty easily, but uh, they're all gonna be the same as far as the wire color and their function. Yellow for all your cameras is gonna be the trigger wire that's gonna tell the system, hey, you, uh, you want this camera right now? Display this camera full screen. The brown wire is for your lights and it's brown because that matches the running light circuit because it's supposed to be a running light. The red wire is the power feed for your camera. So we just twisted that along with the red wire. So we get power for the camera when we turn our running lights on. And the black wire here is ground and it's gonna be the same for all three of your cameras. They come pre-stripped like this and you got a lot stripped on there. So we're actually gonna strip, or we're gonna snip off some of that excess to make it a little bit more friendly in play with our butt connectors. So our wire here, this is our tail light circuit. That's gonna to go to both the red and the brown. 
slide those in there. And we'll grab our butt connector with our crimpers and crimp that on down. Next is our yellow wire here. And we're gonna strip this back. This is the turn signal for the driver's side or the left turn signal. We're gonna wire this to the trigger wire so that way when we turn on our turn signal, it tells our camera here to activate and that will turn on the left camera here full screen. That's really useful for when you're on the highway, going to change lanes, hit that blinker to let people around you know that you're heading on over and your mirrors are great so you can see behind you but you don't get to see everything in the mirror so you get a different perspective with the camera that we're adding here just to further increase the safety when driving your, your rig. So the yellow wire is the trigger wire so we're just going to slide that into our butt connector here and then crimp it down. And lastly we have ground and you're probably thinking hey you only got two wires routed through your hole where are you getting ground from? We can get ground pretty much from anywhere on the frame so what we're actually going to do is just put a little bit of extension on it so that way once we get these pushed through the wall here uh, we'll have enough to play with to be able to attach this to the frame somewhere and get our ground. So we're just going to strip this back. We'll put a butt connector on it. And then we're going to attach it to the black wire on our camera. I will be attaching a ring terminal to it in order to attach this to ground, but you don't want to put it on there yet because we got to pass our wires through this little hole and these butt connectors are going to shrink down pretty small, but a ring terminal will not. So now that we've got all of our connections made, I'd also hold off on stripping this back because that'll make it more difficult to push it through. We'll grab our heat gun and shrink down all these butt connectors. If you need a heat gun, you can get one here at eTrailer. I'm using one from Performance Tools that we have available on the website here. This is the smaller model. And the smaller model's actually been, uh, been using it here for a couple of weeks now, and I've grown kind of fond of it. It's not quite as fast as the larger one, but it's pretty close. It only has a single speed, so you're not going to get that high output that you will on the, on the bigger ones. But honestly, uh, for a lot of the work we do around here, I didn't really need the higher speed in most cases. It just kind of speeded up, sped up the process of shrinking down the butt connectors. But with that higher speed, you get more airflow, and it's a little harder to control the flow of that heat. And if you're working in a tight space, you might actually accidentally transfer heat into something you didn't want to. This little guy here is a slower speed, so it doesn't have nearly as much heat bleed off and you get a nice little uh, air deflector on it that helps direct the air around your butt connectors. If you're going to use your heat gun for something else besides butt connectors, then the bigger one might be a better option for you, but if you're using it exclusively for heat shrink and butt connectors, like I pretty much am, then uh, this little guy works out really well. All right, now that we're all shrunk down, that'll make it easier. Looks like this one could go a little bit more. We want it to be shrunk down there on the ends to make it easier to pass through the opening we've got up here. So those will just slide on through there. Sometimes it wants to be tricky. There we go. This is actually like a two layered piece here. So if you're pushing it and it feels like you got resistance the whole time, there's a good chance you're feeding your wire in between the two uh, walls kind of up where your insulation would go. So uh, maybe pull it back out, recheck. It should slide through nice and easy if you got it lined up properly. And there we go. Might have to reach underneath to pull it. Looks like we kind of got it, probably a little bind. One of our wires probably just coiled up a little bit, so it's stopping it. We should be able to reach around the other side though to kind of move it around to get it to pull all the way through. So yeah, after we reached around the other side, we were able to pull those through and get it flush here, 
Now, the next thing we need to do is there's two screws here. We're gonna remove these two screws. And they're very small, so try not to lose them. After you remove the two screws, this piece will slide off of here. That'll give us access to the four screw holes that we'll need to attach it. You'll have access to these two right away, but these two are hidden behind the uh, camera there. So that's why we had to pull those out to be able to access it. So now all we need to do is run some self-tapping screws in. You do need special self-tapping screws. They need to be button head screws, so that way they don't stick out too far. And that's primarily for these two here. But you also need button head screws because these deep holes here, while you could fit a hex head screw in there, you're probably not gonna be able to fit a socket in to be able to tighten it down. I do sometimes, after taking these screws out and sliding it off, for these two screws here on the other side, I like to start with those and I'll actually slide this back on just for a moment. You gotta get it lined up on there. And the only reason I'm sliding it on is just to make sure when I mount it that I'm gonna be below the slide out or anything here. I'm not accidentally gonna put this in a location where uh, something's gonna collide with it. So we can see it's gonna clear fine there. We're flush up against the side. We're gonna grab our hardware now and just start running it in. So slide it in. Here's a better look at the self-tapping end there. That's required because there's sheet metal behind here. So a regular screw head's not gonna go through it. And then when there's that button head that is pretty much a necessity for these. The reason why you have to provide your own hardware here is because this kit's designed to be replacing an existing side marker light. Uh, this motorhome doesn't have it, so you won't have any hardware to reuse. We're gonna get one screw in, and after you get the first screw in, we can use this as our pivot here to get this level. And we're just using the body lines. So that way, because you know, if, if you try to use an actual level and you're not on level ground, your motor home might not be perfect. So try to find a body line and just follow that. That way it's all uniform with the vehicle. And that looks pretty good. So we're just gonna grab another one. Run it in down here. And then we can slide that off. Grab our remaining fasteners and run them in here. Now that you've got all that run in, we can slide our camera back into place and reinstall those two little screws that we had removed. When running these down, just be careful with these. They're very small, the threads are going into plastic. So I'm using this gun here, but we're barely gonna put any power on it when we go to run it in, because these can strip out really easily. And that's all we want to do, and we'll just run the other one in right below it. After you got all of your fasteners back in, your cover here just clips right onto it. And it actually comes on there when you, when you pull them out of the box. You see that slot at the top? Uh, we didn't show you how to remove them, but your screwdriver just goes in there and just give a little twist. You can actually just pull them off of there too, but it's pretty hard to pull it off by hand. It's possible, but difficult. So we're gonna repeat the same procedures on the other side to get that one mounted up and wired. We'll head underneath now, and we'll get that ground hooked up that we still got dangling. So here's our ground wire right here. We're gonna go right into this cross beam here to get our ground. So we're just gonna strip it back. We're gonna grab ourselves a ring terminal. And all these ring terminals and butt connectors and stuff we're using, you don't get these in your kit. You can get these here at eTrailer. Uh, if you're doing any kind of butt connection here outside the vehicle, I definitely recommend those heat shrink ones I've been using. If we had any connections we needed to make in the vehicle, we could use regular ones, but for our camera here, for the most part, we're gonna be exposed to the elements here on the outside. But you can also get the ring terminals here as well. We're just crimping on this small one here. And then we're gonna switch over to a self-tapping screw. We can use a hex now, since we're not confined by the space measurements that we had on our camera. And you can run it through the ring terminal first or run it up. I always like to start my self-tapper first and then put it through the ring terminal. Sometimes you're fighting it and dealing with that wire and we can just get this going, you know, and then pull it back out.
All right, there we go. We got our ground hooked up. So we're going to repeat the same process on the passenger side. We're going to be zip tying up these wires here. I always like to find factory wiring to zip tie them to. So we got some here. We can take any excess up. Uh, but we're going to double check ourselves and make sure that we're not uh, our wires not going to collide with anything on the vehicle. Make sure it's routed in a safe location here. So we can get the other side done the exact same way. So now we're here at the back. We need to install our camera back here. And normally you would replace one of your lights here at the back with the camera, but we can't do that with this one. Uh, legally, you're required, depending on the height of your vehicle, to have three lights here, and all three of those lights are inside of this single light bar. You can see the three LEDs there, there, and there. So since we can't remove this, we're gonna add ours right below it. Uh, if you did have three separate individual lights, you'd be able to remove one of them to put your camera on there. The middle one's the one you typically would remove. Uh, so we are gonna still have to remove this though, because we need to access the wires to be able to hook up our camera. We're then just gonna put this right back into place once we remove it. So there's two screws here. So now we can get our light off of here. Sometimes you can just push up and kind of peel it off of their motorhomes. Uh, manufacturers typically don't seal them all the way around very well. They just kind of seal the top pretty well. Uh, but we weren't able to push it off, so if that's the case, you can grab a trim panel tool here and just kind of push it underneath of it there and start working it out. And on the top, they went fairly heavy here with the sealant. So what we can do is we can swap from our plastic trim tool on the bottom and around the sides there. And on the top here, we can run our razor knife along the top to cut that thick seal. And that'll just help weaken that seam some to make it easier to get this removed here. But we really wanna be careful not to break this because uh, it's just plastic. So just take your time and just slowly keep working your way around it. All right, so it's still very strongly sealed across the top. Uh, so what we, we really can just leave that. If you can't break the seal, we just needed to be able to see here to access the wiring. We're probably still gonna have to get it all the way off to be able to pull them out far enough to be able to tap into them. But part of what I wanted to do here was the goal was to see, is this an open cavity here? Are we gonna be able to get wires routed from where we're gonna put our light up to here? And it looks like we are. So I am gonna go ahead and keep pulling this off because again, we do need to get the wires out far enough to be able to tap into them. So now that we've got access to our wires, we're gonna take the red and the black and we're gonna be splicing onto those. We're gonna use quick splices. I'd prefer to use butt connectors, but unfortunately the wires are just too short from the factory here to be able to splice into them in a different way. Don't take this black wire here. It's a little bit thicker than the other black one. These red and these black were actually stuck together. I took my razor knife and I just kind of cut between them to separate the two. The other one here, you don't wanna to touch or cut. That's your camera circuits. It's shielded wiring in there, so if you slice it, it'll probably ground out the signal to the shielding and then you won't have a camera anymore, so leave that wire alone. The other two here, though, we're gonna take a quick splice just like this. We're gonna wrap it around our wire and then just squeeze it into place. Just like that. We're then gonna do the same thing with our other wire here for the black one. I'm bringing this out, we're putting our quick splice around it. And then we're just gonna squeeze them together. All right, now that we've got both of those attached, a uh, spade terminal, we'll plug into the other end of them here. So that way we can just crimp a spade terminal onto our circuits and then attach those to our cameras. So we've got access to the wires. We also wanted to double check here to make sure these can push in there and these do fit. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that either. All right, so we have our new camera here. We need to figure out where we're gonna put it. 
turns out that there's a cross beam here. So instead of running our wires behind our paneling here, we're gonna be running them just up along the outside because uh, there's no way for us to get to it. There is an option that you have. You could completely replace this light bar, but if you did replace this light bar, you'd have to add a di two additional lights to it in order for it to work. So we're gonna just kind of hold this up here then. We're gonna run our lights along the outside. I'm gonna use the smaller drill bit and we're gonna drill out a pilot hole here right at the bottom just to give a relief for our wires to pass through. We're just gonna hold our light up here where it was then. We're gonna find our hole there. We're gonna give a small relief here at the bottom for our wires to be able to pass up. Just like that. And that way when we run our wires around the outside here, we'll be able to seal up that hole. So now we're gonna modify the back seal here so we can route the wires up and over to the camera. So we're just trimming out a section here for our wire to be able to run up. We'll seal it all up with a heavy, heavy silicone afterwards to ensure that we don't get any leaks. We're gonna be really thorough uh, since we had to, to modify this here. So now we've got that trimmed. We can take our camera here, put it back into place, and that way our wires got relief to be able to run up and over. Now we're gonna hold our camera up here where we want it to go, line it up with the lights here. That looks good. We'll then take our fasteners, put them into place, and just run our light down. We made sure that our wires are going through the slit that we cut. So we, we made sure they went through the slit so that way we don't pinch the wires and cause any damage to them. We'll now level this out. Next looks pretty good right about there. And then run in our other screws. And this is just like your other cameras that we've mounted. Really not much difference here in the back. The shape's a little different, but it all attaches the same way. Thread your antenna on first if you're gonna be going below the light. Also wanna tell you why we went below instead of above. If you go above the light, when the camera's on and it's dark out and you got your lights on here, the red light that would be right below it would completely drown out your camera and you would hardly be able to see anything. And we know that from experience here. I've tried this in a couple different configurations before to see what would work out better on different vehicles and under always gives you better camera performance. So now we're gonna go ahead and extend the wires just a little bit to make it easier to make our connections because these are really hard to work with here. So we're gonna just take some white wire and some black wire. We're gonna use the white wire for positive. Just like our other cameras, we're twisting the brown and the red wires together so that way the light and the camera get power from the same source. We're gonna crimp these together here. And just like your other ones, there's tons of excess wire, so get rid of some of that. All right, we'll crimp that down. Then we're gonna extend our ground wire. We're gonna use some black wire for that. We're just gonna twist this on here. And then crimp this in place. Get rid of some of this excess. Attach the ground. All right, there we go. Our trigger wire we're actually not gonna use back here. It would take way too long to get any kind of wire run from your reverse lights to have this trigger. And a lot of times you don't really want that anyway on your motor home. Uh, because usually you want your camera to be able to monitor your flat tow and things behind you. A lot, of, a lot of motorhome owners like to flat tow their vehicle. So they want their camera to come on, to stay on the whole time they're driving. So we're not gonna hook up the trigger wire. And that's, that's pretty much standard in most cases. Unless you're using this exclusively as a backup camera, you really don't wanna hook this up.
We'll now shrink down our butt connectors. We'll then trim off the excess we've got here because we're going to be poking some of this excess into that hole there. Uh, but we just don't want too much excess to be there. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time feeding it all into that hole. Now we can strip these back and then we're going to put spade terminals on these to plug into the quick connects that we put on the factory wiring that's up here. All right. So now that we've got those connections made, we can bring these up and attach them. The quick connect with the black wire is ground, so we're gonna hook the black wire from our camera to it. Because that was, we hooked that to ground. It just pushes in the end here. It is kind of difficult to get them to push in all the way. Okay, and then we're gonna push in our other one here. And then we're gonna wrap these in electrical tape to prevent any potential shorts that could possibly occur. I'm gonna wrap a little bit around each one here since these blades are exposed. It has the potential to short. But if we cover them up, So now we're just gonna take our fuse here. We're gonna slide it into our tester to make sure it's gonna work. And then we're gonna go back and, and now that we got our fuse in here, all of our cameras should work. So we can head to our monitor and make sure it's gonna work. Here we can see all three cameras. If we had our blinker, eventually it'll switch over to the camera there. So we can see out that side exclusively when we're gonna turn, maybe change lanes on the highway. We can go ahead and turn our blinker off and eventually it will return to our three cameras. It should work the same way on the other side. Give it a moment. Uh, if you're using this camera system, definitely don't start turning until uh, you, you wait for this to catch up with you. There it goes. So we can see that it does function in all modes. The quality of the cameras, it's so-so. Uh, there's definitely better quality cameras available here at eTrail. It's gonna give you a higher quality picture. Uh, you can see it's quite grainy and uh, but overall, it does what it needs to do. You got a nice large screen here. It is working, so now we're just gonna seal everything up. So now we verified that everything's working properly. We can just snap our cover in place here. We're gonna reinstall our light here. Uh, we're gonna clean all this off before we do. And the way they had run it across the top here, we're gonna seal it somewhat similar, but we're gonna go further than just across the top. We're gonna go down the sides and we're gonna come in an inch or so on each side. Uh, but we do wanna leave the middle here open so that way moisture can vent out of there and evaporate if any happens to get back behind there. So now we're gonna put a nice generous layer of clear silicone here to seal this all back up. So now that we've got our silicone around it, we can clean it up a little bit with our finger if, as we need to. And then I did put a little bit of wire loom over the wires there just to make it look a little bit nicer. And after we repeat this on all of our lights to seal those up, you can see we did stop there on the bottoms. And that completes our installation of Furion's three camera wireless system on our 2020 Sprinter 3500.